Good evening, the news gang is here. Tonight, a formula for dividing revenue that is dividing everyone. Does it all add up? And who is multiplying the division? Also tonight, in wealth and in sickness, the corona millionaires are in town. It was always going to go viral, wasn't it? On Yvonne's take, the governor of Nairobi and the bottle, and Nairobians caught in between. Gashudi punches holes into Senate seven tries. Oh, was it the seventh wonder of the Senate? Will the beast come to mind? On the memo, the COVID-19 warriors are angry and hungry. Are we serious about the fight? The angle is vertical sharing of revenue. And sadly, Kai Kai won't be kicking off the discussion tonight because he is away. <laughs> Let's give dialogue one more chance. Let's adjourn this motion, Mr. Speaker, for us to have a conversation, Mr. Speaker, on how to find a way forward that, Mr. Speaker, can unite all of Senator. us. If we are done a hundred times, we will never be able to arrive to a, to a solution. We look worse, Mr. Speaker, in my view, by being indecisive than by being decisive, Mr. Speaker. Now, we don't have the luxury of time. We must give the country a direction. Let's not make the country start rethinking the importance of this house. It is better for us to talk and achieve consensus. I emphasize the word consensus the last time, rather than a situation where we are creating gainers and losers. All right, welcome to the program. And remember, the program is also in sign language, courtesy of Yula Nzale. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is uh, an interesting week. Eh? We call it the seventh wonder of the Senate, uh, Francis, and the wonder uh, continues. Today, too many things going around, there are many recommendations, proposals. Maybe you just bring us up to speed. What on earth has been going on with the Senate <laughs> and the, <laughs> the sharing of revenue formula? I think this is the, like this, the fourth, fifth time we're discussing this formula yeah. uh, on this show. And uh, it's a matter that is extremely sensitive. Sensitive because it touches on money, and money basically has, has a way of dividing people. But there are also serious politics in the Senate uh, about now, about tomorrow, and about the future. But what is important is that uh, finally, the senators on Tuesday at least agreed on something that would bring everybody on board and that would bring down the temperatures. Because seven times that they have met in that Senate, it has been quarrels and quarrels with no end in sight and with no solution at, at the end of it. You know, it would have been easier if they quarreled, disagreed, and finally agreed on something. But they disagree, they quarrel, but they don't agree on anything. At least the closest they have come to agree on something is what happened on Tuesday when they agreed to adjourn that sitting and as you can hear there, Senator Murkomen saying, let's give dialogue a chance. Mm -hmm. Now, that chance that is being given to dialogue... But isn't that very strange that they agreed to adjourn because they couldn't they agree? They couldn't agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but see, what, is also, what, what is also surprising is that last week, when there was a similar adjournment motion, yeah. it but was rejected... By, by Senator Orengo from actually, CIA. Actually, the numbers that rejected the, the, the proposal were many. 40 against 7, seven or yes, thereabouts. Yes. And, and when, time, when they voted uh, on Tuesday, it was 34 in favor of the adjournment, 26 uh, against the adjournment. And of course, everyone had their reason for doing it. But of course, that adjournment has now given the senators an opportunity to sit back and agree on a few issues. There was a recommendation to go the committee route. Um, each of the factions, that is those who in, those in favor of the um, uh, finance committee proposal, five senators, and those against five senators. They agree and thrash out the contentious issues and come up with one formula. But even before they got there, there was a, a disagreement already because um, <laughs> there was a proposal that the deputy speaker, um, uh, Professor Margaret Kamar, chairs that committee. Those opposed to the finance committee uh, proposal don't want Professor Kamar to chair the committee. Why? Because they say she's biased. Mm. And two, she's an interested party because she supports the formula because her county was gaining some money. So as a, as a, as a result of that, there are various proposals. Oh, let's have um, co-chairs. 
uh, let's have the speaker himself, Ken Lusaka, chair the committee. Uh, some even suggesting that let's have Busia Senator Amos Wako chairing the committee because he remember abstained. last week he abstained uh, on that Kangata uh, amendment uh, vote. And so all manner of mutations coming up, but at least finally there's some sense of unanimity on how to go about it that yeah. is developing. As late as this evening, uh, we understand there are a number of amendments that are coming um, to the Sakaja amendment and to the Finance Committee amendment. We will be discussing those in a, in a, little, in a short while. Uh, on what, is, what are some of the recommendations that we are hearing in terms of proposals? Y Yvonne, Yvonne um, I mean, you've been away and uh, probably taking a glance at what's going on at the Senate. I mean... <laughs> Uh, amendments to the amendments and, and adjournments the amendments or and no the proposals adjournments. and agreeing to adjourn because they couldn't agree. And the first, second and third generation yeah. formula. I mean, it's enough to, to, to make Kenyans just ask what? Let's just, you know, get this over and done with and get a decision, mm -hmm. um, you know, brought up. I mean, I think on the issue of perhaps bias and as to who would lead it, is, is there anyone, Francis and, and team, who would not be biased? I mean, even though, uh, let's say, uh, Senator Wako abstained, mm -hmm. but, you know, he's, he also represents a county yep. and there would be, uh, you know, and some... And a county sort of, that is gaining. And a county that is gaining. So, I, you know, there's, as you can see, there's a lot of political undertones, and I think that is what overshadows everything. And I think what we were discussing, uh, Francis, was interesting about, you know, the handshake and, uh, you know, the, the chief whip uh, mm -hmm. threatening the handshake and now saying, no, 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 you know what, the handshake is fine. Um, and it's seemingly being an embarrassing loss for the government side, or the handshake, if you like, mm -hmm. on the floor of the House, um, in something that says that. And I think, for me, there was also the conduct, and we'll talk about that again, I suppose, as well. You know, how this matter has been conducted in the House, there's been a lot of, you know, kifua, as mm -hmm. we call it. Um, I was watching that... Uh, the showdown, you know, right after Sakaja talked about the threats that were posed to his life. And he then went on to say, but there's even been no, you know, mm. PG meeting where we've Actually, agreed we have, on the we way have that forward. that soundbite, uh, yeah. Yvonne, Irongo yeah. Kangata versus Sakaja yeah. on that uh, position. So for me, that I think, you know, we're getting that. And that, you know, just showed... The process of negotiation, there was no discussion there. So let's listen to them. Mirungu Kangata and Johnson Sakaja facing off. We had a parliamentary group of Jubilee Party where we called each and every person, several members of Jubilee Party, including several who don't support the position of the party attended. You refuse to attend the parliamentary group Senator meeting? Sakaja, Senator Sakaja. Yeah, it's a fact. Senator so Sakaja. therefore, do not come Order, to mislead Order. the House. Do not Order. come to mislead the House. Now that I have come and have voted, those who want to arrest me, please go ahead, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, you have seen the vitriol. You have seen those banners being put up there for me to change my position. I am not one to, me, to be intimidated. I'm the son of Emily Ayoti Kubasu, a champion. Uongozi wa upande ule. Walio wengi ukiongozwa na ndugu yangu Pogisio ni ukweli kabisa kwamba umefeli mtihani hauwezi hiyo kazi kangata hawezi kukonvince hata hata seneta mmoja kwa ile upande wake wa walio wengi kurudi pande, kurudi pande kwenda pande yote hawezi yeah, so, I mean, surely, uh, those were some of the things that I would have hoped to happen behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, muende uko nje muchapane mangoto, and then you come into the house when you've agreed on something. But it clearly showed, for me, um, the image of a majority whip who lost control, you know, on the yeah, floor and, and of the and house. For the first time, I think yeah. it, is, it, is, it, it bears discussing this whole thing of, of, of the quality of, of, of leadership. Because, yeah. I mean... There is a technical aspect of this, uh, how much money should have gone where, yeah. how is the formula working, there's the politics of it. But I think something that has been so glaring, Jamila, mm -hmm. is just the quality of leadership on the majority side. I mean, just the ability to rally all these people together to build and just consensus. get something done. Because, I mean, a majority side gets things done because it has the numbers. And beyond that, there is also the government that usually typically would be on the side of, of of, of whatever leadership is in, in, in the House. And, and yet we actually have seen a very feeble leadership, quite frankly. I'm concerned about the state of leadership, Joe, as you speak about it. And maybe if you compare it to the previous leadership in the House, in the Senate of mm -hmm. uh, Murkumen and, 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 and others, I think they were able to get the conversation going a bit more faster. There was some sort of order in handling issues in the House as compared to what we're seeing now. 
where we are not seeing the leadership that uh, Kenyans are expecting to see. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing the direction that people are expecting the Senate to be taking in this matter. Seven times and no decision has been made. Considering even in all around the world over, the Senate is actually usually the upper house. And then we look even at the history of where the Senate came from. The Senate came from ancient Rome, where it was old men who would sit together to make decisions because they were trusted to be wise. There was wisdom there. But we're not seeing the wisdom here in this instance. In Kenya, it's almost an oxymoron. If you compare mm -hmm. it to what the Senate does, maybe in countries like the US and the ancient Rome that we're talking about, leadership is supposed to thrive. It's supposed to stand out, whether it's opposition or whether it's in the government. We have Kenyans looking up at the 47 senators, looking at the senators in the house, hoping for a decision. We need to see that there is a way forward in this instance because the effects of not having a revenue sharing formula are huge. And we have seen, I mean, it, it's quite, quite stunningly, the. The majority side, uh, most particularly the majority whip, resorting to threats. I mean, yeah. I remember yeah. the weekend uh, preceding the last debate that we had, the last adjournment, if you like. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, spewing threats, you know, from some place. I think it was in Muranga or wherever he was. And, you know, saying if this thing doesn't pass, then we will change our minds about the BBI and mm. that sort of thing. And one wondered where that actually came from, whether it was a jubilee thing that was mm -hmm. decided somewhere that the position of, 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 of the party would be this or the other in, 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 in the Senate. And, 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 and Francis, you have uh, covered the Senate obviously for a long period of time. This looks very strange to me where the majority side looks helpless and they have yeah. to resort to very cheap threats that, you know, if you vote this way, you'll have to come and explain to the party <laughs> if you don't vote like this. I mean, what happened to things like lobbying? What happened to mm -hmm. reaching across the Consensus, island? You know, building. just talking Consensus. to the other people and saying, hey, this is what we are proposing. And, you know, give and take and some, somehow at the end of the day, something comes. I mean, seven times? Yeah, that and, is and embarrassing. Add, Francis, mm. it's, it's equally embarrassing, or perhaps more so, because it's not just a majority side, but there's a handshake. Yep. So that means they have not only the Jubilee numbers, but they're supposed to have, you know, all of these, uh, you know, others from the other side of the aisle. And so that makes this all the more interesting that they would lose such a critical vote, doesn't it? You see, th this is a discussion that defied even the handshake yeah. parameters in the House. Yeah, yeah. I did. Why do I say so? Because their personal interests, particularly by counties that were going to lose, 18 counties that were going to lose um, some resources, definitely would not have voted in favor of the formula. Yeah. And even the 29 counties that were gaining some money, not all counties were gaining what they would have considered sufficient mm -hmm. gaining. For example, you had the computations that uh, Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja was giving. Nairobi was going to gain about 100 million shillings, and he was saying this is not enough compared to the amount of money that... 100? About 100 million. 100 million, Yeah, yes. 100 million yes. shillings, yeah. compared to what they would ordinarily yeah. want to gain. And then, of course, there was um, a narrative that was uh, thrown out there that this was about one man, one, one. vote, one <laughs> shilling which I don't think it was the case, because if it was about one man, one vote, one shilling, then you would have taken the 316 billion shillings, and divide by the it. population in the yes. country, and then, you know, yeah. uh, sh Give, share, share it, it equitably. Yeah. Yes. But that was not the case, because there are various parameters that were there that would favor one side and not favor the other side. So this is something that would have required a lot of tact, a lot of lobbying, a lot of understanding what is at stake. Because n no county would want to lose money. Of course, every county would want to gain some money. Right. So the solution is in a, a, an in-between formula that would make you not lose so much, but at the same time, not to be seen to gain so much. Um, I, I bumped into a memo that uh, Irongo Kangata wrote to the Jubilee leadership on the 8th of July, 2020. And it is listed very confidential. And the title is How to Pass That Generation County's Revenue Sharing Formula. From the onset, even before the discussion in the Senate, you know, gained a lot of um, yeah. uh, heat on this matter, he warned the leadership that 24 counties were required to pass the formula, obviously, for yeah. 24 delegations because um, it's out of 47, yeah? yeah? And that he was concerned that four counties that were gaining were wavering. They were not uh -huh. very you know, okay. decisive on what they wanted, right. whether they wanted to support or not. 18 counties that were losing would definitely, definitely. not support. Uh -huh. And then he was concerned that seven senators allied to the so-called Tanga Tanga faction would oppose the formula 
to settle political scores after you know yeah. um uh, Mulcoman, Mulcoman and Kihika, Kihika. and other committee chairpersons were removed during that yeah. jubilee purge right. and then um he was also uh, concerned that there are some counties that would vote with their neighbors Kakamega like, would like vote in sympathetic right? Even Kisi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kisi and Yamira, would Kitui, would, uh, Kitui uh, I mean, and Makweni that was yeah. losing. Yeah. So there were all those parameters. In fact, he goes on to say that 29 potential counties may vote no, as opposed to 18 solidly yes. You see, these were things that were already seen that it was going to be problematic. So what happened so from then there? This probably because they clearly could it, see what was coming. Yeah, it probably it should, have, it should have called for what you're saying behind the scene a kind of discussions. Let's agree on how to go about it before you take this matter to the floor of the house and you know bring all keep the keep it tidy. Yeah, keep it tidy. Yeah. For the first time since 2013 you can say the majority side lost at least in a motion. You remember that amendment by Kangata? It lost. I think that is the first um, loss I'm, I can remember mm. uh, on the floor of the house. But finally, at least now there's, some, there's an opportunity to agree on something. I've seen a, a tweet by uh, uh, Senator Murkomen this evening. He's saying that there are some amendments that are being proposed by uh, Meru Senator Midhika Linturi to amend the Sakaja Amendment. So that eventually okay. they come up with one amendment that would be win-win. Okay, and my head is spinning. Yeah, it's spinning, yeah? <laughs> so this, this, okay. this, this, amend, this, amend, this amendment this amendment to the amendment is proposing that <laughs> a share, a part of the 316 billion shillings, be subjected to the old formula. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe about 250 or 270 billion or 280 billion, depending on the permutations. And then the remainder... Apply, be applied using the finance committee recommendation. You see, there is so some win, there's some win, win and win. some loss. Okay. So eventually, everybody wins something, loses something, wins something, loses something. Maybe that's what they're calling a win-win -win formula. Yes, Jamila. You, you yes, I'm um, talking about formulas and 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 um, leadership in the house and jubilee. Um, Thinking about the silence of the president in this whole matter, in terms of he has not talked about it, despite mm -hmm. insinuations by even the whip, uh, Senator Enmu Kangata, about the president on this matter, I think he needs to come out clear on this particular issue because um, the way the conversation is going, it seems not to be going the right direction. And maybe it's not longer an issue about money. It's about national mm -hmm. unity. And I think he needs to take a position. Either he comes and speaks out and says what he thinks or take a position or play a role in preserving the national unity that is now being discussed here. Because let's face it, this discussion has been divisive to some extent. Uh, to, a very large, to a yeah. great yeah. extent. Regional, yeah. Even tribal. Yes. And I was listening to a soundbite yeah. by the governor of, of Moranga, if we can hear him, <laughs> and, then, and then we can continue with this discussion. Na hiyo nataka kurudia kama ardhi inapewa pesa maji ipewe pesa mimi maji yangu yote inachukuliwa inapekwa na lobby eh? inatengeneza pombe inauzwa mabilioni ma, ma inatengeneza soda inauzwa mabilioni watu wanaogelea huko wanasikia mzuri huko kwa jacuzzi eh? eh? na wengine mpaka wanalima nayo huko na lobby mimi mimi nikae hivi kama mjinga pesa yangu iwe kidogo na mali yangu iende na mtu hapa watu wengine wanasema I think the, the sentiments by the governor clearly shows the division that is there because yeah. of this particular issue along region, along a tribe. And I watched the clip of him. He's from Uranga and makes me remember all those nationalists from that area. If they heard him speaking, this is what they would think. Mm. They cannot but what does, what does he say is water? I mean, I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I guess, how can you they, say I mean, a natural resource you see, you see belongs some, to a see particular some, place? Some of the things that I think uh, remained rather hazy around this whole devolution, because mm. there's a question of regionalism or the, the resources that fall within, within regions as opposed to counties. Because if you think about what he's calling is water, I mean... A lot of those rivers have their sources around Mount Kenya, the Abadeas, yeah. which are, strictly speaking, not in Moranga. So, so there are many other people upstream who would say, well, actually, your majesty, Ako, and if that water goes downstream all the way to Tana River, what are those guys down there going, going to, to say, say that now they hold, fold their arms and say, no, this water belongs to Mwangi area? Else, yeah. I think there are some of those things that are quite dangerous, even if they fall within the bigger context of the conversations, the divisions that we have seen around this yeah. revenue question. And just agreeing with you, Jamila, I think that the president, to the extent that he's 
name has been bandied about in that exactly. house very many mm -hmm. times yeah. during this to the extent that this thing is a real threat present to, to danger unity, to the unity, unity of the country yeah. and to the extent that he keeps meeting all these governors and having all manner of conversations i think it behoves him to really just come out and and talk about this matter that has the potential of, of causing serious problems mm -hmm. in the country and also to demonstrate that he truly cares about devolution because devolution is what is at stake here. People are saying, well, you know, why are you taking all the money here? And by the way, that whole one man, one vote, one shilling thing is something that has been bandied about in yeah. his name. Mm -hmm. yes. It is some political branding that is very closely associated with him. A lot of the political analysis suggesting that the president uh, has had serious political trouble in his backyard mm -hmm. and that somehow a formula that seems to appease his backyard is something that would perhaps mm -hmm. work for him in whatever other conversations he may want to have with uh, central Kenya over, for example, BBI and, yeah. and other things he might want to do. So, so there's something around this thing that is actually very untidy that it needs to take Take no less a voice than, than the, the president's, president's for it to actually come down. I believe that there are people who are speaking in that Senate in particular ways that if the president came and, you know, uh, spoke, in any case, I mean, when these uh, leadership changes were happening, the president said that he wanted people who could drive his agenda. So as it is now, is this he what needs his to convince the is? country that yeah. what is happening in the Senate is not part of his mm -hmm. agenda. Right. That is more the reason why he should actually Absolutely. come out. And, and I think we need to agree that we are part of one country. We need to have a sincere conversation about the development patterns in this country. Yeah. I mean, what stops us from distributing development to other regions where a business person from Habaswain can successfully conduct business right. in Nara? or Mamamboga in Yandarwa can have her market in Narok. I think we are trivializing this issue because we're making it sound like um, each county is a state on its own. It mm -hmm. is not. We are part of one country and there needs to have, there should be a way where development is distributed across everywhere. And, and in fact, this, this disagreement gives us pause, I think, to, to take a look at a number of things. So all the politics aside, year after year, we have disagreements over the allocation of revenue mm -hmm. to the counties. Mm -hmm. I remember doing an explainer on just this issue last year, where we sought um, the advice of the Supreme Court. Remember, governors were going to court over this very issue. So that tells you that we haven't quite worked out this formula. So there needs to be something that, that changes so that this is not the same narrative every year, a month after the new financial year has began. I think it's also time to, to think about the role of the, the C Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of what the advice they give is, is it's an advisory. Recommendations. It's recommendations. None of it is binding. And I've seen, you know, in certain quarters, people are asking, so what is the role of the CRA in this matter? They've created the formulae, but, you know, that is taken to the Senate mm -hmm. and the Senate and, I mean, you know, the National Assembly and then the Senate can then decide what happens with it. But it also brings... Um, you know, to light certain issues that we need to start thinking about with devolution with respect to funds. And I was reading a report from Kipra on what is known as own source revenue for uh -huh. counties. You know, the chance where they raise a bit of their own money as well, instead of depending on this 15% that is coming uh, from the national government. And the own source revenue is made up of property rates, licenses and fees, entertainment taxes, you know, amongst others. And I know, you know, there's been a little bit of complaints with what the counties are charging, maybe, you know, trying to raise a frivolous tax here and there because they're trying to make some money. But I think it would be important for us to start discussing, you know, boosting the counties towards creating, you know, more from their own source revenue. So that Kipra report um, said that since 2003, 2013, sorry, uh, the own source revenue has contributed an average of 11, close to 12% of total county expenditures. And in fact, it said that from in the last financial year, 13 counties achieved their own source revenue targets. And that was a significant improvement from the previous year where it was only three counties. Mm -hmm. And so we need to start to get to the point where counties are also raising their money. Um, and then again, a final conversation for me outside of the politics and who's leaning where is whilst we are fighting over 15%, counties are really fighting for peanuts. 85% is mm -hmm. left at the national level. Mm -hmm. You don't see this kind of debate for that 85%. And there has been some talk as well about, well, why are we still doing 15%? by the way, of the last audited uh, accounts, which we know are what, how many financial years ago? Three? Mm, three. Yeah. 
So there's yeah. bigger questions, Actually, I think, yeah. for me, and Actually, those are the ones that I think we need to start looking at towards making this process, you know, a little more seamless and avoiding this debate. Yeah, but, but I, th I think related to that is the question of, I mean, um, that own source revenue is a, is a good conversation, uh, but I think there are also counties in the country that don't have that capacity, that right. they need to get to a certain level because yeah. you need a certain threshold of, of people who are paying their rates, for example, mm -hmm. or who are able to pay whatever rates. Yeah. Uh, and whatever. perhaps that comes from um, development. Exactly. So, you That's know, the more is. there's development, yeah. the more. I mean, and those are the conversations, the conversations we should be having. Like even the, yeah. peop the people who are touting population, I mean, yes. there's a valid argument that I've heard that people don't just go to places, people actually follow development. Yes. I mean, yes. If you go to some places in this country where there is hardly anything, you will generally find fewer people. Yeah. If you find places, there's a reason people why there are more people there in, if there's nothing There's a reason happening. why there are more people in Nairobi, for example, than yeah, there are people yeah. in Habaswen that right. you talked Nairobi, about. Yeah. Yeah. And so people will always go where there is development. Like the oil thing they're talking about in Turkana, the moment we actually start having real oil, forget the early thing they're talking about. Remember the Isiolo, yeah. the project in Isiolo? Mm -hmm. Isiolo yes. is, after, the, after those projects, Isiolo is no longer the Isiolo of mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we are arguing about here, or what the senators are arguing about here, is about 23% of the, of, the, of the national revenue. So a whole 77% is still at the national government. Yeah. But and, and, even as we invite the president to, to make his pronouncement on this discussion, I would also think the Senate is also expected to make the right de de decisions. You know, the, the Senate is, senators are elected. They have a leadership that should guide the country on this matter in a proper manner. Proper manner, talking about equity, you know, looking at the interests of each county, what are the parameters that we are talking about? Those are some of the fundamental things that we should be talking about because I don't think the president will be expected to make a decision on everything or give guidance on everything, especially in parliament, which we see as an independent arm mm. of the government. The same way we don't, we don't ask him for direction on what is going to happen in the judiciary in relation to certain matters. So I would expect this is a leadership question in the Senate particularly, that they have sat seven times and not agreed, tells us there's a leadership challenge and, there. And, and guys, because be, before, there, 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 Joe, there, there ought to have been even a, a, a scenario where senators sat behind the scenes, you know, mm. a closed door session. There doesn't let seem to agree, have been any indication that that happened. Go on a retreat, happens. discuss, have, yeah. a, have a discussion on this matter. Let's hope that this discussion now will now lead us there. The formula that is being proposed by Linturi, for example, you know, allocate a certain amount of money to that formula A and a certain amount of money to formula B. Let's have that discussion. But ultimately, I hope once we are done with this discussion, we'll look at the bigger picture. Um, the resources that remain at the national government. What goes where? How is development distributed? Because at the end of the day, we must talk about the question of equity. Those who are talking about population have a point. Those who are talking about landmass have a point. Because the poverty in, there are poor people in Mandera like there are poor people in Kakamega, sure. you know? The cost of uh, delivering services in Marsabit is very different from the cost of delivering the same services in Kiambu, for example. So we, we should not look at things generally. Let, let's look at things specifically so that even as we distribute these resources, we distribute them with that in mind. And finally, let's also help the counties to generate their own resources, to attract investment, so that at the end of the day, the over-reliance on the allocation from the national government will not be a big issue. Currently, counties are really suffering. I mean, people haven't been paid. Some, most of my, I know a few people who are telling me they haven't been paid their July salaries. So what does that tell us? It tells us if the national government is not allocating or the, the, the county government's allocation is not getting to them in good time, they have a serious crisis to deal with. Guys, I wanted us to talk a little bit about the ODM leader, Raila Odinga, I mean, he's yeah. uh, doubled in this uh, a little bit. I mean, he had uh, uh, a statement, uh, I think, uh, before the other discussion, mm -hmm. I mean, before the other adjournment the, the last week, and he, he seemed to be saying that the CRA formula should pass. I mean, there, there was a discussion whether there was indeed a CRA formula. On the floor of the house. Yes, yeah, then yes. had, two days ago, I think there was a, a report about him saying he when he came here, I didn't got a full brief and, and all of that. And this evening, I've seen a clarification from uh, Dennis, Onyango. Uh, Dennis Onyango, basically saying that uh, uh, the, the, the former prime minister is trying to help the country navigate through this. 
acknowledging that in fact there is no CRA formula before yeah. the Senate because the that Senate formula Senate. has been amended a mm -hmm. couple of times mm -hmm. and as we speak is still being amended uh, going by what Francis was talking about. Um, he, he is in a difficult place. I mean, there is pressure coming from the president's <clears throat> side. There's pressure coming from some of the counties that voted for him overwhelmingly in the last election. Counties that have typically been seen as his uh, backyard. If you talk about the coastal uh, counties, if you talk about some of the counties like Nyamira, like Vihiga, that are actually losing out in this thing. Some yeah. of the counties in Ukambani, um, Makweni specifically. So what is this... Uh, uh, thing that is going on with him like it, it, it you don't want to be him right now mm. <laughs> he's in a difficult situation difficult in the sense that you, you you saw some members of parliament from the coast region say we have been betrayed yes. so whichever decision is made party, as long yeah. as there's a loss in terms of revenue um, there will be cries of betrayal and so I, I saw a lot of sense in what you were saying yesterday uh, in that interview by Kennedy Murevi that let's have a win-win formula win-win formula in the sense that those who are losing also don't feel like they are losing and those who are gaining don't go gloating that we have you yeah. know we have won because this this narrative had taken um, a rather difficult tra trajectory that they are winners and they are losers 18 losers and 29 winners that was not, that wasn't going to be very comfortable i spoke to uh, a senator whose name i will not mention here and he was telling me that um, the odm party leader was in a very difficult scenario because for example, how do you explain to coast how uh, the entire almost the entire coast mm -hmm. Mombasa was losing, um, Kilifi was mm -hmm. losing, Kwale was losing, Tana River was losing, um, Lamu was losing. Yeah. So that's how do you explain to the them that counties, you know yeah. that agree to lose? And then there is another discussion that is coming up soon if if it will really happen the BBI one, because every everywhere I covered those BBI functions, those BBI rallies, I, on top of the recommendations was more resources to counties yep. you know you had people talk about 35 percent uh -huh. others 45 percent so how will you go back and convince them that support the bbi proposal because, because it says 35 percent yeah. they will ask you but you Half supported you supported our loss yes. on the 15 percent right. so how do you how do you convince us to support the 35 percent or so mm -hmm. so it's a very difficult discussion and hopefully it will get to where it's supposed to be all right guys we need to take a break when we come back, we'll be talking about COVID billionaires. Or oh, are they millionaires? <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>